In this video, we're going to continue our lesson on parallel lines intersected by another line. Last lesson, we talked about angle types. Uh, so what are the names of those angles that are created? In this video, we're going to be talking about the relationships of those angles. And so we're going to be able to use those relationships to set up equations to solve for some unknown measures. First of all, we could take a protractor to this diagram and we could use our protractor to measure these angles and visualize some of the angles that are congruent and then other pairs of angles that are supplementary or add up to 180. So using a protractor to measure all these angles, we can see that angle 1 and angle 4 are the same. Well, we know that because they're vertical. But also, angle 1 and angle 5 are the same, so those corresponding angles must be the exact same measure. Well, that should make sense because corresponding angles are not different angles, they're just the same angle moved to a different spot. What else? We got angles 1 and 8 being congruent, so that must mean that alternate exterior angles are congruent. And that's true because actually this angle just gets rotated to become this angle in this spot. What else do we got? We got um, same side angles. We could say same side interior angles like 3 and 5. Well, we should be able to see that their measures add up to 180. So same side angles that are inside must be supplementary. If we look at same side exterior angles like 1 and 7, see the same exact relationship happening. So same side angles, no matter if they're inside or outside, are supplementary. Uh, and then we also have some alternate interior angles. 3 and 6, they seem to be congruent. 4 and 5 are also alternate interior, they seem to be congruent. All right, so I think that's all of our relationships there. We can put that down in a little organizer here. The four types of angles that are congruent are vertical, corresponding, and are two types of alternate angles. Angles that are supplementary or add up to 180, those are any of the linear pairs, those adjacent angles that are right next to each other, or any of our same side angles. So one thing that you might be able to do to remember this is rather than memorize all of these angles, that are congruent, you can just say, well, I know that same side angles are supplementary. And actually, if you remember that alliteration, same side supplementary, then maybe that's an easy way to keep it in your head. And remember that all other angles are going to be congruent. Let's see if we can use that knowledge and not use a protractor. So you can pause the video, try and fill out this diagram knowing that angle 1 is 135 degrees. Do not use your protractor and instead use these relationships that we just talked about to get our angle measures. Alright, hopefully you ended up with something similar. If angle 1 is 135, well we know vertical from there is 135. We also know that alternate exterior angles are going to be the same corresponding angles are going to be the same. So there's all our 135 degree measures. Uh, if we think about linear pairs here, we can subtract 135 from 180 and get our supplement over here to be 45 degrees. We could then use vertical relationships to get angle 3, corresponding relationships to get angle 6, and alternate exterior angles to get angle 7 there. Lots of ways to do it. That's just one example. You could just use vertical and linear relationships pretty much the entire way through until you have to hop over using a corresponding relationship maybe. So if you can do that with just numbers, you should be able to do the next thing, which is involving some algebraic expressions and setting up some equations to solve. So we still just have those two relationships. Either angles are going to be congruent, so we're going to be able to set them equal to each other, or they're going to be uh, supplementary. So we'll be able to combine like terms and set it equal to 180. 
What I want you to do on these examples is first identify what type of angles you see and then think about their relationship. Are they congruent or supplementary? And then that should, of course, help you set up an equation to help you solve for x. Looking at these two angles, hopefully you recognize that they're vertical, and so vertical angles are equal or congruent. So I should be able to set these two values or expressions equal to each other and then solve for x by subtracting 70 from both sides. Be careful anytime we're doing angles or really solving anything in geometry. If you get a negative value, just take a moment and think about is that an actual real value that is used or did we make a mistake? Because oftentimes in geometry we're dealing with measurements that can't be negative. However, there are times where we can get x values that are negative. Just take a moment, plug it back in, and see if your measure for this angle is still positive. So if we plug a negative 10 back in, we get 60, and so we're OK. Next example. Recognize that these two angles are corresponding angles. They're the exact same angle, just in a different spot. So again, we should be able to set these equal to each other and solve for x. To do that, one way that we could do it is subtract 11x from both sides. That gives me x on the left side. I'm going to move my numbers over to the right side, so I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides. So I have 1x on the left side and 6 on the right side. All right, last one. Recognize that these two angle types are same side interior angles, so same side supplementary. So we're going to combine our like terms and set it equal to 180. So combining our x's, 17x and 4x, we get 21x. 14 and negative 2, that's 14 minus 2, is positive 12. Two more steps. Let's subtract 12 to get our x turned by itself. So now we have 21x equals 168. We'll divide by 21 to undo that multiplication. And 21 goes into 168 eight times. There was a challenge that I tried to put on there. However, in doing the problem, it turned out to be some irrational answers. And uh, I didn't like that. So even though it looks like it should be a nice problem, it didn't turn out so nice. So go ahead and cross that one off. All right. so. Hopefully you can recognize angle types, know their relationship, so that you can set up equations to solve for unknown measures.